I've recently decided it's time to move my mining rigs from my dad's office over into my house just to gain more control over things and uh, well he needs more room for his mining equipment. So uh, I'm going to get that stuff moved out and I've really been going back and forth on what I wanted to do as far as uh, bringing it here to the house because it's loud and it's hot and takes up a little bit of space. So what I'm going to do is put it here in the garage. You can see um, over my shoulder I've got a little cubby. Uh, back there where I've got like a workbench where I do a lot of my gun work and reloading and things. So um, we're actually going to use that space. I'm going to flip the camera around and kind of tell you what I'm going to do. All right, so over here on the left side of the garage, you can see I've got a little um, area where it's kind of detached from the garage as it's uh, sunken back inside there. And I'm going to mount a little cubby or cabinet, like a tiny little room up here where I'm going to do all the mining rigs. So it's uh, going to be 72 inches wide. Uh, 36 inches deep and 24 inches tall. It's kind of what, my, what I have planned out. You can see I've already run Ethernet uh, through the attic. I've dropped both walls um, here and in the living room to the router. So um, I'm going to go uh, pipe in AC right here. We'll put an AC vent and then we'll put an exhaust over there is what I'm planning to do. And um, I've got some plywood and insulated board that we're going to build this little room out of. So I don't know um, what I'm going to do for the front. Maybe do like a hinged door or something like that. But I've got to go uh, to the office to measure the mining rigs as they sit. I've got them on a 72 inch wire rack right now. So anyway, this is what we're going to do, I think. Um, and right over here, I already ran power for 240. You can see it behind that uh, welding jacket. So I'm going to put in the right kind of receptacle and I'm going to run my power supplies off of two, 240 as well. Okay, we've got some progress here. We've got our base. Uh, plywood installed. It's a 5 8 sheet and uh, just some simple brackets down there. Ethernet is all terminated on both sides. We've got our battery backup for our 115. Um, most everything in here is going to be on 240. I've got all this stuff on the way for the 240 side of things. Um, PDU, cords, all that kind of stuff. And then what I think I'm going to go with is actually I think I'm going to lay down my wire rack and run all the GPUs off of that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, right here I've got my one inch insulation board for the base. We're gonna put it on the inside and then I'll use some expanding foam on the edges. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get started with that. I'm gonna get this insulation board laid down, get some insulation going, and then I've gotta figure out um, what I'm gonna do for the door. So my initial idea was I'd have a full size door um, two foot tall and the same width as everything and it would kind of open up but uh, my light is right there I moved it back from where it was back there but it's still definitely gonna be in the way of a door so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with that maybe I'll move it maybe I'll move it back even more and then put a small light under here for my workbench um, that way this two foot door can swing open and then I can have like a little latch or something just sticking out of the drywall so yep there's your update I'm gonna keep on going so I've got the um, hanger support up here, and that's going to be for the hinged door that's going to go across. Um, I needed really another piece of plywood, but I used what I had left. So the long 72-inch door is actually going to be made of two pieces. I'll fix them together in the middle somehow with like some flat pieces of steel or something like that. So not ideal. Maybe it'll bite me in the butt later for not being sturdy, but whatever. That's what we're going to do for now. So it's going to hang off of this 2x4. Um, that goes directly into the joist. Um, so with some 3-inch uh, screws, that thing is affixed in there. I didn't want to just put the hinges straight on the ceiling. Um, and then this is the hinge that we're going to go with. So it's going to go up on there like that. And the door is going to open up like that. So it can come up all the way open. And we'll use some gas struts like from a car like for the hood or the hatch, you know? So that way it just opens up by itself and I don't have to reach all the way to the ceiling every time. Um, so I gotta measure and see what size those are gonna be. For now, we're just gonna use this little hook uh, just so we can keep working. And then once it's all installed, I'll measure and see what size struts I can use. All right, up here in the attic, we've got a regular six inch insulated duct. And this is what we're going to tap into that goes into the garage over there on the other side. 
Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to tee into this or uh, if I'm just going to take this line and cap off that vent over there. Um, it goes to the laundry room and there's just a tiny little 4x8 anyway. Um, so I'm not sure if it's too important if I'm just going to cap it off or run a T or a Y in over here. So this is what this looks like for right now. Alrighty, update. We've got the door installed. Um, right now it's just all the way open and I've got my forced air fan and the Y pipe for the duct in the attic and also my PDU and uh, the plug. So we've got a lot of things done. Here's the door. All in place with uh, the hinges and all that kind of stuff. So you can see the foam board is set up a little bit right here. So when it closes, this board right here will stick one inch into this little room, right? So this foam will butt up against that foam. So it'll be completely sealed up in the front. And uh, then I need to get some little latches to uh, make the door stay on both sides. Um, so yeah, that'll be cool. Um, here's the plug we're going to go with. It's an L630. Um, this is the L630R uh, receptacle. So it's a twist lock. 30 volt and this is the l630 p for plug and it's got the pdu i think that i think the cord is 10 foot long and then we've got our dell uh, unit here to plug all of our goodies into um, this fan is 440 cfm it was the biggest one uh, that i could find that was rated for high heat and continuous use uh, it just came from amazon so i mean I don't really know a whole lot about long-term quality, but we'll see. And then this uh, Y-pipe is going to go in that spot that I showed you guys up in the attic. So I've already got a piece of duct work uh, up there. There is the outlet. I, probably, I may put another vent like that over there, but I just kind of pulled it through for now. So uh, next up, we'll be piping all this stuff in. So uh, the only thing I'm waiting on right now is, um, I think it's called C13 to C14 plugs to go from the PDU to the breakout boards. Um, and then we can stick the mining rigs up there. Uh, so what I'm gonna end up doing is building some little wooden mining rigs, I think, from these pieces of wood here. Um, I saw a YouTube video on a guy doing them and they look, uh, they, they look pretty good. So I think that's what I might do. Um, it's cheap enough. But uh, yeah, there is the, uh, that's the update for now. Okay, we've got our blower installed in line in this vent here. This is a new vent that I ran. Uh, and it goes over there uh, to that Y section that I also installed. So um, I'm a little bit worried about how much air this is going to draw from the air box. I don't know if it's going to overpower the air box and take away from the other vents. But the only thing I can do at this point is just give it a shot. So, uh, yep, we're going to keep on moving. Alrighty, next up we're going to wire in this uh, twist lock connector. It's a NEMA six, uh, L630R. So this is what's going to go in to power the PDU for the cabinet up there. So I've already uh, I wired this in previously and it's on its own uh, little circuit here. So we're just going to get this plug wired up. So here are uh, my two rigs that I'm going to be bringing over. We've got uh, quite a setup here uh, as you can see. Computers all over the place. Um, up top, this is my 8 GPU AMD rig. It's uh, 5700 XTs mostly. Um, and then I've got an NVIDIA rig down here. Uh, a lot of 1660 cards. Um, we've got one open slot left to add another. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna start pulling these things down, boxing them up, and uh, we'll get them over to the cabinet. You can see the boards that I'm using. Uh, we've got one here that has a slot style motherboard. Uh, I like this one a lot. The slot style makes it a little bit of a pain, um, but this card is really good. It has a better processor and stuff in it. This one down here is the one you see quite often online. Um, that's all built into the board, and I don't like this one as much. It has issues, um, stability problems really. So you can see how I have these things in here that literally just hanging by zip ties. Uh, super simple way to do it. I mean, you can 
You can get the GPU specific hangers. Uh, you can buy them. They're way too expensive in my opinion. Uh, I've got access to a 3D printer to do it myself. I just really didn't care. Zip ties do the exact same thing. And then you can see I've got two 750 watt uh, server power supplies per rig. But um, yeah, let's get this thing apart and all boxed up. We've got all the GPUs and everything over here to the house. And uh, we're going to go ahead and build out these two little rigs. So I'll put a link in the description um, to the video on how to build these things. This was not my idea. Um, this was just the easiest way, uh, I think, to get something done instead of making something myself. Uh, some guy had already done a video. So uh, these little rigs are super easy to make. And they hold eight GPUs each, which is what my motherboards hold. So it should be perfect. I'm going to get to assembling these things, and then we'll get them up in the cabinet. Well, we've got, finally got this project done and assembled. We've got everything working inside there, and we're uh, right about 600 mega hash for all the cards that I have in here. Um, there's also one in the house. But anyway, we've got seven cards on the NVIDIA rig. We've got eight cards over here on the AMD rig. Uh, finally got everything up and going. I kept running into a problem um, where my uh, hive system was crashing and it's because whenever I put these cards in I put them in a different order so the overclocks were uh, all kind of crazy um, but anyway this uh, is all running pretty smooth I need to put a vent uh, cover right there for the inlet but I'm gonna go inside and start tuning and get all these overclock settings in uh, what I'm gonna do is put an ambient temperature uh, gauge inside here just so I can keep an eye on things not just the GPU temps but I can see how the GPU temps uh, relate to the ambient temperature inside here. So um, I've got Ethernet going through that switch to both of these motherboards there. Um, I don't have a way right now to measure uh, overall power usage. There on the left, you can see that 220 volt uh, twist lock that's going to the PDUs up here. So uh, yeah, there we go. I may do an update video on this. Um, this is the first video I've done like this on my channel. Usually it's like cars and fixing stuff like that. But I thought you might, guys might be interested in uh, some of my crypto mining stuff. Uh, I also do chia farming and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that at some point. Luckily I got in uh, sort of early and um, anyway yeah maybe we'll visit that some other time. If you have any questions put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.